Hey everybody, welcome to Bach Stage. I wish it was Bach Stage. <laughs> like Almost Sebastian like, Bach? Yeah, like like Bach as in we did classical music, but we don't. No, no classical music. Yeah, in this no, podcast. no, it's backstage with a simple church. Today's very special. We have Robin Horton joining us with two special guests, Jennifer and James Ward. That's right. Yeah, James is the heart for Lebanon. And Jennifer runs Lighthouse, Lighthouse Family Tree. Yeah, Lighthouse Family Tree. Two very important ministries that help out both lo- not locally, but nationally and globally. But then it all ties together locally. That's right. Great content. Evan did a fantastic job just asking those questions and really f- digging deep with both Jennifer and James about what their ministry is about and what they do and why it's important. For us. And the way we're going to help them is this Easter, we're giving you a chance to buy a Lego brick. It's a foot. It's got 12 inches by 12. 12 inches. Well, it's it's a foot long and yes. then six inches tall. We'll find that out in the podcast. But that helps to go and give a visual reminder of someone you've lost this year, someone as a family that has gone through a difficult time, maybe has had COVID or gone through something else. Because just because it was COVID doesn't mean there weren't other difficult things that were happening in the world this year. And we want to take a chance at Easter to talk about that and to help rebuild the lives of the people locally, nationally, and globally, and we come up with the three L's there. Uh, Legos is one of the L's, but it's not one. It's Legos, Legos. and it's talking about local, Local. lighthouse, and Lebanon. So you'll find out how we're going to do that, and we hope that it inspires you. Legos, the fourth the fourth L. Yeah, There you go. So we want you to be a part of that. There's going to be a link in the show notes so you can find out how to get a brick to be a part this Easter. Get your tickets for Easter. You do have to have a ticket. It's free. We just want to know you're coming. Gets you a health questionnaire to be safe, and all that good stuff is there today. So thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Hit the subscribe button. You can go back and listen to past podcasts, know what's going on. Or if you're watching on YouTube, thanks for watching. See us this morning. Yes, and one more thing to go back to the tickets. The only reason why we're doing tickets is we want to know who's coming so we can prepare for you. That means donuts and drinks and all the fun things that we do every Easter. So please, please, that's the only reason why we're doing a ticket. I know it seems weird, especially coming from us. Once again, it's free. We just want to know who's coming so we can prepare for you. Kids' classes, we have birth yes. through four-year-olds. They are classes available for the first time in a year. We want to be a part of that. So then we have outdoor activities. Egg hunt. Snow cone. bunny will be there. The bunny is there. Do we have two dose bunnies? I think it's just one bunny this year, right. Scott. Just one. That's right. Any bunny. <laughs> but check all that out at the link in the show notes. And thanks for here. Let's check out the talk with Robin. I never know what that noise is going to sound like. Sometimes yeah, it's, it's more... It's sh- always nasally. It is. It's good. But thanks for tuning in yes. to Backstage. We're excited you're here. My name's Evan. That's Scott. Hi. And we have Robin Horton, our <sighs> do-good coordinator today. Robin. Robin, we are excited to talk about Easter and all the good stuff we're doing with some Lego bricks. I love Legos. I love Legos, too. I didn't know how much I loved them until I had a boy, and then... But even my girls have loved building with Lego. I will say, Lego has been very intentional to reach out to girls. They have a whole Lego friend line and a daughter that I now loves Legos. Checking that out this past week when I went and bought a bought a new one, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Just since Carly was little, they've it's big. Oh, yeah. If you've ever watched the show Lego Masters, there was yes. a reality show last year, and the vice president that started that line was on there. So she was talking about that and just kind of going and reaching girls, and they have a cartoon with it, and it's really actually really good. I love it. Mm-hmm. I love it. Little, so yeah, we're hoping to. Um, you know, have a little fun and rebuild some lives with Legos this Easter. I mean, how much fun is that? What church is having Legos at the Easter? Not enough. The more Legos, the Not better. Not enough. Maybe the Lego church? <laughs> Could be. There's there a Lego is Bible. A, is there really? Yeah, yeah. They reenact the Bible with Lego characters. Oh, so That's mm-hmm. actually the Old Testament one. A little violent. We found yeah. that out reading but Guess it what? <laughs> the Old Testament is violent. <laughs> that's Not fine. new. But bloody Lego guys are. It's mm-hmm. a lot for a five-year-old. We're like, oh, we're just going to bloody scroll right that there. page. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's, wait till you get to the crucifixion. Mm, that one probably will be a little bold too. But probably <laughs> true, <laughs> true things. It, you know, there is good news on the other side of that. That's so, right. Amen. So that's All what right. we're here to celebrate today. Talk about a little hope that we want to do good um, this with this Easter. So yeah. And I'm you excited. came up with alliteration because we're a church and we like alliteration, right? That's the L's that we're going to help do Legos this Easter. So talk a little bit about that. Legos, yes. So we want to rebuild lives with Legos both here locally in Lebanon and with Lighthouse Family Retreat. So that's kind of covering 
local, national, global. You know, Jesus kind of encouraged us to go to the ends of the earth. And and so we want to do that and how we're doing good even on Easter. So we have come up with uh, this uh, plan to really to sell some Legos, big Legos, like big, Scott. They are big. They're like giant I mean, Legos. Yeah. Do we They're know like the measurement? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's Actually, 12 have, inches yeah. long, six inches high. So a foot. it's a big brick. That is a foot. A foot. <laughs> there you go. Yes, it's a foot. So um, this Easter, for a, ten, a donation of $10 or more, you can uh, buy a Lego that will be a part of creating something very memorable as part of our service. You know, if you've been to Easter's in the past, or maybe you guys have already talked about this, but... Um, there's always a do good component. Like we want to motivate you. We're not going to take an offering, but we want you to be engaged um, in, in giving back to our community. And so we've done that in a lot of ways. You guys can probably speak more to that because I even I wasn't even a part of the team when you did some of those. So what were some of the things y'all done? Oh man, throwing socks, throwing underwear for the homeless shelter. We did toilet <laughs> not paper. Not the ones they yes. had on. No, no, absolutely not. Very yeah, clear. Yeah, we actually provided... Toilet paper, though, for what? For two three, years. Two or three years straight to the uh, rescue mission. Shreveport Boat Rescue All Mission. All their toilet paper for the full year we threw in one day. And so we took a roll of toilet paper. You yes. took the package and donated it, but everybody threw one roll, and we yeah. rolled the CenturyLink. And you're yeah. like, oh, my gosh, you yeah. wasted toilet paper, whatever. But the two-year supply yeah. to have that fun. To have we literally experience. filled up a 16-foot trailer with toilet paper. And Crazy. that's a real need. Yeah, that's something that, that was you. that was pre-COVID, though. Let me let me point that out. That's right. That Absolutely. was pre-COVID. Yeah. Everything was different. Mm-hmm. But this year with the Lego Wall is really cool, and we're going to use that money to help do some stuff locally, and then we get to talk to the other organizations later yeah. in the podcast. We'll have them on to be able to talk about Lebanon and Lighthouse. Yeah. But locally, what are you thinking, Rob? Locally, what does it look like? there's a lot of ways. Obviously, even just I was glancing back, you know, through memories, time hop over the last year since. Uh, you know, the start of the pandemic and the COVID shutdowns and what we've been able to do locally, um, we will continue to do through the funds given on Easter. And that's just meeting real time needs, whether it be um, uh, helping people who um, are food insecure. My husband loves that I use that word so often, <laughs> kind of like Justin says, let me hear you one time. Sean says that I say food insecurity about that often. I'm like, but it's but true. It's, it's, and it's explain true. food it's, insecurity versus just calling somebody hungry. Hungry. Or not yeah, food. it's yeah. just basically not having the resources available to you, whether that be because of where you live or financial strains. Lots of reasons that people fall into the into the category of food insecure. It doesn't mean they don't have anything. It's just they don't have enough for their family to make it through that average week. And we've seen the impact, the financial impact has been huge. So we've been able to help Common Ground, Northwest Louisiana Food Bank. We'll continue to do things like that because the lines aren't getting shorter as much as we would want to say, want to believe um, that they are, they they aren't yet. So we want to be able to continue to still help those people. But there's a lot of health challenges. We want to be able to help nurses just processing the grief that they have experienced over the last year. So we want to help provide counseling locally for for those who've struggled because of COVID and other other reasons. But then we've got families that are going through health crisis and like Steve Gomez and we've talked about him a lot of, a lot and the challenges that weren't even COVID related, but it still happened during this time. So it's been a struggle to have family close. But now he's, you know, hopefully coming home soon, and uh, we've put a ramp at his house. But we want to be able to do that for other people. So having those resources in place that we can mobilize quickly when things like that happen, um, that's it's just huge um, in the value that we can have. And it's just a way that we can build relationships and show the love of Jesus in a very tangible way. Oh, that's great. And I think about Steve Gomez and somebody listening is like, I don't know Steve Gomez. I don't yeah. care. I don't know anybody about that, whatever. But something that Andy Stanley says we're a big fan of is you do for one what you wish you could do for all. Mm-hmm. That because you can't fix every problem doesn't mean you don't try to fix some. Right. And we'd love to be able to meet every need that every person asks and do and come and be able to do that. But it takes resources. It takes money. Mm-hmm. And so by buying this Lego brick, by funding these projects, when something comes, if you're listening and you have a family member or somebody you know that you work with and you reach out and say, hey, I'd like to do something for them. 
when we have that opportunity, we have that money to be able to do right. it, we can go and do more projects and do more good. But right. it takes everybody chipping in a little to help solve this bigger problem. Yeah, absolutely. It's putting all the pieces together and um, Which and is a together. Lego reference. Anybody catch this? Yes, you do really do have to <laughs> put them all together, and and so I think I think we're going to see the impact here locally. I'm excited, but about what we can do nationally and globally as well. But, um, you know, we do as a church already put a lot of resources into the local organizations that are impacting those who are homeless. Um, uh, we, uh, there's all kinds of Streetport Bossier rescue mission, the hub common ground Providence house. We, we support those every single month. A lot of people may not know that, that we are already, financially giving to them and um and we just want to be able to meet other needs as those ar- arrive so we're um excited for people to be a part of this and give and then we just want to see how god builds all that together to do something bigger than any of us can can really ask or imagine yeah and like larry was on from the rescue mission a couple months ago mm-hmm. and it was something talking to him of why would we try to do our own homeless ministry when yeah. there's already great people in our community doing okay. it and we can help support them and give them the resources yeah. they need because they are the experts they're getting the grants they're the ones doing it and we partner with those organizations i think you're right i don't think we talk about it a lot yeah. it's not like oh great it's me and you it's the people giving no it and is. we're trying to go and direct those funds to have the most impact to help the organizations and we can partner with them instead of hey Hey, we know best. We're going to do it our way. Simple Church is going to start our own rescue mission, our own food yeah. pantry, our own. But instead, we don't. Right? We don't know. <laughs> no. No. I don't know if you've met any of us, uh, but we aren't experts. Not at all. So we partner with the people that are. That and are. I and I think that's the wisest really cool use of thing. our funds. Absolutely. And I'm really, really, really grateful for those who give um, regularly to the Simple Church to be able so that we can partner with those organizations. So um, we're excited about what that's going to look like on Easter for those who do buy a brick, even if you if you're a listener and you won't be in Shreveport Bossier on on Easter, you can still be a part of this. Um, there's still ways that you can have a huge impact both locally, nationally, and globally by buying a brick, and we'll give you more of those instructions on how to do that. That's right. So fill out the form. It's in the show notes. You can also follow us on Instagram or go to thesimplechurch.tv, get mm-hmm. your brick and wherever you are in the country, and we'll do that in your honor or the loss of a loved one, right? Yeah, we'll be a part yeah. Of- so, yeah. So visually picture all these bricks. And I kind of was thinking about, you know, the Old Testament story where they um, put stones of remembrance and just of the things that God has done. And I think that's a way these bricks are really going to be laid as a way for families to remember either somebody they've lost, they want to honor somebody, or just the challenges that they've overcome in 2020 and know that God is going to build on that and he's going to use that for for our good and for his glory. And I think we're really going to see that played out visually on Easter. It's going to be an incredible thing to be a part of. That's right. And if you're not in town, you can watch it online too. We'll be mm-hmm. online so you can be a part of the service and see that. And it's going to be, I think, a really cool moment. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's the local part. And now we're going to bring in some friends and talk to them yeah. about the other things because it depends on your personality, right? If some people are like, oh, I don't, we shouldn't send money overseas and help anybody else when you focus here. But I hope that by listening to these next couple things mm-hmm. and even families that you don't know locally, you can see what good they're doing and part of that here in the States with cancer and then internationally with Lebanon. Yes, absolutely. So yes, so check out, we've got a little video for you to check out about Easter and then we'll be back. If there's one thing about Simple Church, it's donuts. And guess what? That's why you need a ticket this year. Easter special, and we don't want to run out of donuts. So get your ticket and don't miss it. Yes, and we're back. We've talked a little bit about local. Now we want to talk about what we're doing at Easter for our friends um, in ministry nationally and globally. So we have invited two of my favorite people, Jennifer Ward with Lighthouse Family Retreat and James Ward with Heart for Lebanon to join us. Good morning. Good morning. We're glad to be here. Thank thank you for having us. I think this is the best thing that's happened on Zoom in a while. Uh, We're glad to have you guys here. Uh I'm sorry, James. I cut you off. We're trying to figure out the delay. No, no worries. We're just excited to be here and look forward to the conversation today. Yes, we are thrilled that you guys had a little time to share. And we've been excited to share a little bit already with the Simple Church about what you guys are doing. But we wanted to hear directly from... Um, you guys, uh, exactly what you guys are doing, um, 
in each of your ministries. So if James, if you want to start, you're already on the screen here. So, and just kind of tell us a little bit about Heart for Lebanon um, and the work that you do. Yeah, excellent. Well, as Robin said, I'm with Heart for Lebanon. Um, Our mission as an organization is to make disciples for Jesus Christ. And as you can imagine from our name, we work in Lebanon, uh, primarily in Lebanon, surrounding areas in the Middle East a bit. And uh, primarily our work is centered around working with Syrian refugees, Iraqi refugees, Kurdish refugees, as well as poor or marginalized Lebanese families. And uh, we're really all about serving them in a way that is uh, unconditional, that's holistic, and that's highly relational. And so we do that takes the form of uh, humanitarian aid, education programs, empowerment, skills training, leadership development, Ultimately, we leverage those things so that we're able to build a long-term relationship with these families and help lead them into a relationship with Jesus Christ. So that's, in a quick overview, that's what we do, and that's what we're all about. We're excited to partner with Simple Church and, uh, and impact some families this Easter. Yes, yes. Wow, that is a lot. I mean, I know you guys are sitting there looking like, oh my goodness, what all did he just say? So we'll unpack a little bit more of that, James. But Jennifer, tell us about Lighthouse Family Retreat. Thanks, Robin. Well, I'm Jennifer Ward, and I get the privilege of serving at Lighthouse Family Retreat. And we exist to shine the light of Christ to families that are living through childhood cancer. And the way that we do that is strengthening families through week-long beach retreats, one-day retreats, and helpful resources where we can support families that are fighting for their child's life. And anyone who has walked through the cancer journey or anyone that has a child can imagine the devastation of a cancer diagnosis for your child. It has an impact on marriages, siblings, and so Lighthouse is really focused on strengthening the entire family and helping families just find some rest, some joy, some restoration through these retreats and resources, and ultimately hope beyond the cure, but hope in the strength and relationship with Jesus. Wow. That... um is exciting to hear what you guys are being a, have been a part of and that we get to partner with you guys. Um, I know we've spent a lot of time over the last few weeks um, unpacking what 2020 looked like for us as a church. We're about to relaunch. Um, Easter will be our first big Sunday to gather again. And so listening to you guys, I know that you guys both serve what we would consider vulnerable populations when it comes to covid and the spread. So to kind of take a minute, and Jennifer, we can start with you just to share what 2020 looked like for your organization. I mean, all churches, nonprofits, it, it, it's been a struggle, but um, kind of talk about what that looked like um, and how 2020 was different for you. Yeah, 2020, as we all know, was a challenge for everybody. Every organization, every family across the globe was impacted. For Lighthouse, it was enormously impactful. I mean, we bring immune compromised kids together to have a retreat. And so, as you mentioned, they're some of the most vulnerable in a pandemic. And so last year, we were all um, ready to go and book to host 26 week-long retreats at the beach for these families, four one-day retreats across the country, and we had to cancel all of them. Wow. And it was enormously impacting. And so um, it was incredible to see how our partners, like Simple Church, rallied around us. I mean, you all were some of the very first to call Lighthouse and say, we know this is going to be a challenging season. We've got to check in the mail. And gosh, I get a little choked up Mm -hmm. even um, sharing that because it really allowed us as an organization when our flagship program could not happen in a pandemic to be able to reimagine how we could serve these families. And so, um, although it was incredibly impacting and we had to cancel so much of what we had planned, like many of listeners had to do, I'm sure we were able to do a care package program where we mobilized hundreds of care packages to these families across the country. Simple Church was a big part of that, you guys doing the joy boxes. Uh, We were able to create and launch digital resources. We launched a podcast. 
We launched a 30-day devotional, a, a new blog to be able to create some helpful resources that families could access anywhere. And then we're also able to expand our hospital care program. Anyone who's had a, a family member or a loved one in the hospital knows how challenging that has been in this pandemic season. And for these families, oftentimes they've got a child with cancer in the hospital. Only one parent can mm-hmm. go. And um, and the family is split up during this time of treatment, especially with the weight of the pandemic and the COVID protocols. And expanding our hospital care programs allowed us to go into the hospitals to bring a little light and joy and hope and and let these families know that they're not forgotten in this challenging season. And you guys were a big part of that for Lighthouse. Yeah. It was fun for us to be a part of it. I know, I think, Evan, you could probably speak to the experience you had just with your girls packing those joy boxes and doing something different. Because I think, if I remember, Evan, correct me, but um, that was one of the first trips you guys actually took to the store. I mean, took Nora shopping. Yeah, so actually the one-year anniversary of Frozen 2 popped up on Time Hop yesterday. (laughs) I remember that phase where we were watching a lot of movies and trapped inside with a four-year-old and a one-year-old at the time. And so when we got to go out, we were very conscious of not being out in the pandemic and safe. I would go grocery shopping once a week early on Friday mornings Mm -hmm. and trying to limit exposure. But then we did finally get to go shop and do that. And it was just such a fun thing to be able to do it and to have some of those conversations. And this goes back to what we're doing as a church with the FX box of when you have those opportunities to do something for somebody else, Mm -hmm. it blesses your kids. Because yeah. Nora now is thinking, okay, I don't want the toy, but I want to help somebody else. Operation Christmas Child. When you mm-hmm. shop for somebody else, you're instilling those things in your kids. And Joybox was an opportunity to do that for us and was really, really cool. Yeah, it was. It Absolutely. was great. You got to go deliver them in person to some folks in Dallas, we did. right? We did. We did get to deliver to some families in, in the Dallas area. But it was great to be a part of something so much bigger than ourselves and get people out and, um, and be a part of um, bringing just a little bit of joy. That's right. Um, during the summer, when they didn't get to go to the beach, we brought the beach to their front door. Well, kind of, yeah, sort of. Close. And Not we, as good. we got some incredible feedback. I wish I could share all the stories with you all, but we thought it would be a blessing. We did not realize how impactful it would be for these families. Just the fact that someone um, that they don't know cared enough to do that, mm-hmm. it will be back. Uh, where they were feeling the isolation in a really uh, powerful way with what they were going through with cancer. And um, it was it was more impactful than we would have imagined. Mm. So I wanted to share that with your listeners because, again, you guys were a big part of making that happen. Yeah. That's awesome. One thing real quick was, Jennifer, what's the name of your podcast? If somebody's listening to this one, they're looking for another one. You guys said you started one. Yes, it's called Perspective, and you can find it on the Lighthouse website if anyone wants to to take a listen. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. We do have several families walking that um, through childhood cancer, and so just having a resource that we can share with them, too, like that, I think is great, and other families out there. Um, James? And it's primarily focused, sorry, Robin, it's primarily focused on um, families living through childhood cancer, but We have kids, and I think really anyone who's raising a family can benefit from a lot of the topics that are talked about on that podcast. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's great. So, James, talk a little bit about Lebanon in 2020. It had, it it was not just COVID. Hmm. That was a challenge. It was was not. You know, we, uh, in our our staff meeting the other day, I said, well, you know, it was March 1st. I said, well, welcome to the 15th month of 2020, because <laughs> um, it just will not end, it, especially especially in Lebanon. Uh, COVID, as, as it has been around the world, was a really, really big issue in 2020, as you can imagine. Um, and this is true in the U.S., too. I think probably anywhere around the world. The families that tend to be uh, the most uh, poor, the most vulnerable um, in the times of a major crisis, they remain the most vulnerable. And the realities of life uh, in Lebanon for a refugee family are such that um, there, there is no, thing, no such thing as social distancing in a refugee settlement. Um, there's no such thing as practicing you know, regular hand washing and uh, sanitizing everything. Those things just don't exist. And so the populations that we serve are really, really vulnerable to COVID-19. 
And so part of our goal early on as this thing started to unwind was, okay, how do, how do we serve them? How do we educate them? How do we help minimize the impact of COVID-19 in these settlements? Because we were very concerned that once it got in, it would just spread like crazy. Wow. Uh, yeah. So we were able to do a number of things. We were able to help dis- distribute uh, hygiene kits um, to families that had uh, gloves, masks, sanit- hand sanitizer, antiseptic, uh, cleaner, just all sorts of stuff. Uh, one of the cool things we did is uh, we, we have a program where we uh, teach refugee ladies how to sew. Um, and so they can learn a skill. And we kind of transition that program to have them making face masks that we were able to distribute uh, throughout the refugee settlements that we serve. Um, and so we, we took a very uh, assertive, direct approach to say, all right, well, we're, we're going to continue serving. Mm-hmm. We're going to continue meeting these families where they are. We're just going to change what we do and how we deliver it so that we're able to protect them while also helping to reduce their, their vulnerability to the virus. Um, and so it's been, it's been very challenging from a coronavirus standpoint. About half of our staff have gotten the coronavirus in wow. country, which statistically is out of balance. Yeah. Uh, but it's because they're out in the community serving and, uh, and they're continuing to build those relationships and, and to serve. Um, a lot of our Bible studies, worship services, education program, uh, we've had to move all of those virtually. Uh, even mm-hmm. still today, most of them are, are virtual in Lebanon. Um, and so we're utilizing WhatsApp and Zoom and a number of different uh, platforms to try to do that. Our teachers are going in and spending much more time one-on-one with families. And so while it's been challenging at a macro level, at the micro level, it's allowed us to really zoom, kind of zoom in, no, mm-hmm. pun, no pun intended there, <laughs> and build relationships with individual families uh, because we're not able to do the large group thing. Uh, and then in August, the explosion that, that you guys heard about, Simple Church helped out in our response with, uh, with the explosion in Beirut, that was just devastating. You have a country that is already on the verge of economic collapse, uh, political instability, uh, and then you have this explosion, which which was the largest documented explosion, uh, non nuclear documented explosion, and uh, I mean it just it just leveled a major part of downtown Beirut. Uh, of, uh, the estimates are three hundred thousand family or three hundred thousand people uh, displaced and left homeless. And so our That's our like, staff team was. I pause there really quick because I always come back to this. That's like the entirety yeah. of Shreveport, Bossier City being. Left homeless, no like infrastructure, of our, yeah. no, power, yes, yeah. and, and so for the mag, just to kind of set the <laughs> playing field Scam. for people to understand that that is unbelievable. Three hundred. I mean, it, it is, it is, it is, it is, uh, it is unbelievable, and and the country is just not in a place to be able to recover from that. So most of those families are still homeless today, um, and so it's just created another level of crisis within within Lebanon that um, that that we've been able to as a as an organization to respond to. Uh, and on the good side of it, right, is there's this paradox of ministry and it's, it's, it's unfortunate, but it's true that the worse things get physically, the greater the opportunity there is spiritually and mm-hmm. the greater opportunity there is for the church and the body of Christ to be the church and to be the body of Christ. Uh, and we see that today in Lebanon now more than ever. The vast majority of the families that we serve come from a Muslim background. And so, um, you know, the realities of when, when their foundation is shaken, when their world's turned upside down, when things are haywire, um, they're looking, they're asking questions. And when we're able to come in and serve them, build relationships with them, uh, and, and truly invest in them relationally, it's just unbelievable what God does through those relationships. And, that, and that's been the positive thing that's come out of 2020 is we've seen that and we've seen the fruit of that as these families move towards relationship with, with Jesus. Wow. Yeah. So you hit on some of that, James, and something I was curious about is you hear the news about the Middle East, right? It all gets lumped in together, but there's obviously very nuanced, very different situations in every country. But like with the state of the church and with the Muslim people, do you find that there's a resistance? Is it like all the headlines that you see of, I don't know, it, Name any organization, right? That's a terrorist organization or these horrible things we hear about Muslim people. What is your experience there on the ground of the state of the church and how that's working and what that looks like as you guys are trying to work with a Muslim primarily population? That's a great question. And it's, it's interesting because what I have experienced personally is not what I expected to experience. Mm-hmm. I expected on my first trip 
over there several years ago to go into a settlement and, you know, people to be aggressive and we don't want you here. And, you know, just I just didn't did not expect to be welcomed in. Um, and the reality is, in general, and of course, like you said, there's nuances and there's different, uh, there, there, there certainly are differences based on whether it's a, a Sunni family, a Shia family, uh, their background, their affiliations. But in general, um, the Muslim culture is very hospitable. And so when, when you come to visit them, there is a cultural um, expectation, a, a cultural norm that is to welcome, even if, even if they don't think they're going to agree with you or they don't think they're going to like you. Um, and so we've experienced that. The other thing that's unique, and, and I really believe this is a unique time in history, uh, specifically for the church in the Middle East, is that if you look at Syria, just as an example, um, you know, there, there have been over 5 million families. I actually was looking at the updated statistics this morning. Over 5 million families that have been displaced from Syria uh, because of the war in Syria. About 2 million of those uh, about 2 million of those people, so 5 million families, 2 million people have settled in Lebanon, right? And so these are families that are refugees of war. And so they had to flee under threat of violence. They, they, everybody you talk to in these refugee settlements has lost a loved one to war in Syria. And when they leave and they come into the nation of Lebanon, which happens to be the most open, free, democratic country in the Middle East, and the People that show up to serve them are followers of Jesus. They're not from an extremist group. There's not teams from the local mosque being mobilized to help serve uh, these folks. The reality is it's Christians. It's followers of Jesus that are there to serve them. And the reason they're displaced is because of folks from, it's because of Sunnis fighting Shias. It's because of ISIS fighting, raiding their town. It's because of these extremist groups. And so they're left in a place where, what they've been told about their faith and their, their belief system isn't playing out like they've been told it would play out. And then when they show up as displaced people, the folks that are there to love them and serve them and care for their children and educate their children are followers of Jesus. And that, that creates this incredible opportunity for the church. And, and I believe just personally, and I'm probably a little biased to this, but I think, I think it's an incredible historic opportunity. There are more Muslims that are coming to faith in Christ today than any time in history. Mm. And I think it's, it's an opportunity that the church in large part is not taking full advantage of um, because it's, it's a window that's open and how long God is going to keep this window open to reach these parts of the world, who knows, but for now it's open. And so our goal organizationally is we're going to, we're going to maximize every resource, every dollar, every opportunity we have to take advantage of that window while it's open. And just real quick for people that don't know, and maybe in the news, I know it's very complicated, but a summary of the war in Syria, what's going on. And I know like I listened to something the other day and it's talking about the use of chemical weapons and just awful, awful things that are happening in Syria that I think with COVID and all the other stuff probably gets pushed in the back burner of the human rights atrocities and things that are going on there in Syria. Yeah, the, uh, the, the United Nations has called the war in Syria and the, uh, the, the killing and displacement of people the greatest humanitarian disaster since World War II, or the worst humanitarian disaster. And they don't since throw that around World lightly. <laughs> They're not prone to exaggerate. No, they don't. <laughs> they, they don't. And, and even today, um, there's still, while we don't hear about it as much, um, there is still a lot of violence, a lot of war that's taking place between the regime. Uh, the, the, the government of Syria and the uh, what they would call the rebel groups or the groups that are that are trying to get control from the regime. Um, and so that's how it started was kind of between these two groups. Uh, but ultimately, what happened over time is other foreign players got involved. Russia's gotten involved. ISIS has gotten involved, gotten involved. Turkey has gotten involved. And it's, it's kind of turned into this proxy war in Syria where there's these different powers fighting each other in Syria, just it really doesn't have all that much to do with the nation of Syria. Syria is just the place where they've all come together to, to go head to head. And unfortunately, that leaves the Syrian people as incredibly vulnerable. Um, and it's just caused this, this horrible situation. Um, but the interesting thing is our, our staff and country, if you were to talk to our director and country, uh, he would tell you that for years, he and his church, and he was the, the president of a Bible college, 
they had prayed for opportunities to reach Syria with the gospel. And because for decades, for generations, Syria has been very, very hostile to, to the gospel. And what's happened through the midst of this crisis is Syria has come to Lebanon and, and they're, they've been able to see that prayer answered, just not in the way they, they thought it would be. Wow. That is amazing. Um, and how God works in spite of the difficulties or through the difficulties, through the, the challenges. Um, we were talking as a staff yesterday, just reminded of the scripture of, um, you know, in this world you have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And so I think that's so um, applicable, what you're talking about, James, and and what we are talking about at this Easter and bringing hope. And um, just really, as we challenge our people to purchase a brick, to rebuild lives with Legos, um, we're really excited about what that's going to look like on Easter and and um, just the to the visual impact of everybody being a part of a part of that, but we want to hear from you guys on how um, our our folks that we're challenging to give generously on Easter in a very unique way, but how those donations will re- rebuild lives um, in Lebanon, rebuild lives of families going through childhood cancer, and what that kind of looks like for you guys. You want me to start? Go ahead, Jennifer. Um, well, for 2021, I think the simplest way to express that uh, comes to mind is we're able to give these families that have been through so much battling childhood cancer and then the, the complications of the past year, uh, which were difficult for everyone, but you know, almost unimaginable in the context of childhood cancer, something that's not canceled in 2021. Yeah. And um, these families have, you know, we've gotten a little taste of what these families go through on a daily basis during their childhood cancer journey. And I know for, for some, COVID has been absolutely devastating and not to minimize that in any way. But for most people, the reality of um, having to be so mindful of uh, wearing a mask or um, someone that you care for that's vulnerable getting sick, that, that's a new experience. And for these families, that's their everyday life. Mm. Uh, and in 2021, to, to serve families in a, in a real tangible way. I think it's going to be even more meaningful coming out yeah. of the pandemic, not only for the people that we're serving, but those of us that get to serve because it's been a perspective shift for all of us this past year. And so for 2021, um, we're giving families something that's not canceled, both for families living through childhood cancer and then for all of us that are going to be a part of serving. Um, we are reimagining our week-long retreat and we've put an enormous amount of COVID protocols in place um, to kind of rebuild that program and be able to serve these families in a safe context where they feel safe coming, where families feel safe coming with their kids to serve. And we've had an overwhelming response uh, for that. We've had over 300 families that are signed up to be served on week-long retreats this wow, year. Cool. Um, and we have, um, we have openings for people that want to come and serve and love on these families. We've gotten uh, release forms from doctors. Everybody's feeling great about the way that we've been able to reimagine the program from a safety perspective, which is huge. Um, And as you can imagine, some of those changes are expensive. And so a lot of what um, our partners are contributing to and Simple Church is contributing to will allow us to be able to fund those changes and serve these families where they don't have to pay anything to come um, and have this week with their family, connecting with other Mm -hmm. families that are going through a similar journey. Um, The other thing that this is going to um, to help with is expanding our one-day retreats. We're taking Lighthouse to families that can't travel, and we're doing that in multiple places throughout the country. And, um, And then the last thing is a program I'm really, really excited about. We're going to be launching what we're calling right now Community of Care, which is an ongoing support system 
for families living through childhood cancer beyond a week. Um, the idea would be to have a small group of people adopt a family living through childhood cancer to be able to support them throughout their their cancer journey, uh, bringing meals, notes of encouragement, praying for them, just knowing that they're they're um, they have people walking alongside them through the duration of this battle. Hmm. That's great. So if there's a family that is interested in helping or there's a family that is maybe knows someone going through childhood cancer, how would they go about doing that, Jennifer? Well, we have a team from Simple Church coming this summer to serve on a week-long retreat. Um, so, Robin, you've got the information mm-hmm. on on that. So that's one way. I, I mean, what you guys are doing through this campaign at Easter is a huge part of enabling all of this. Um and then we have uh, on our on our web page we have a serve page with all the different ways that you can you can be involved with those different programs as well. Awesome. Yes. So I can give them information if they are interested in the summer um, uh, lighthouse retreat. But going to lighthousefamilyretreat.org. I think, and we'll put that in the show notes. But um, will be where you can find resources, serving opportunities if you want to do a deep dive on who Lighthouse is and how they're serving families around the country. Awesome. All right, James, how about you? How can we get involved and talk about a little bit what those donations are going to do from the Easter uh, Lego building? <laughs> well, I, I, I love that. I love that imagery of the, the building blocks and the Legos because so much of what we do organizationally is just what you guys are talking about. It's helping to rebuild these lives that have just been torn apart mm-hmm. by war and uh, disaster, corruption, extreme poverty, all of all of the things that, that we've talked about. And uh, and so what Simple Church is a part of this Easter is really incredible because we you really are helping to provide the resources that allow us to reach these families uh, with humanitarian aid with um, education, help educating their children, uh, with um, hygiene kits, just all of these, these tools, if you will, or these things that we use to get access to these families, to mm-hmm. reach them that allow that those items that really allow us the opportunity to build a trust-based relationship with them. Uh, and then once we have that, that in through those, uh, through what we would call family care or through our, through our, and track, then we're able to really build relationships with those families. And, and if you guys know, right, transformation ultimately comes in the context of, of relationships. Yeah. And yeah. so we're able to build relationships with those families, uh, invite them into Bible studies, hear their stories, pray with them. Um, and, and then ultimately our end goal is, is to disciple them, is to help make disciples um, and ultimately, what we believe will take place, and this is what I think is just so excited about the long-term opportunity, is that if Simple Church invests in our ability to, to reach and engage these families, ultimately, that's providing a platform, that's providing the foundation, right, if you're talking about building, mm-hmm. that we need to disciple these families. And as we disciple these families over, over a number of years, hopefully, God willing, um, we then believe we'll have the opportunity to begin to mobilize these families, help mobilize them back into Syria, back into Iraq, back into some of the darkest places of our world spiritually as disciple makers. And so the exciting thing about it is, yes, we're rebuilding lives. Yes, we're helping them to, to, to create a foundation that they can build on to be able to rebuild and experience the transformation. But we're doing it so that so that they will become rebuilders themselves. Mm-hmm. They will then be able to go back to Syria and, and as followers of Christ, as disciples make, makers, of, as leaders, help to rebuild their country and rebuild their community. Um, and so as, as you guys engage with, uh, with, with the rebuilding of lives during this Easter season, that's, that's, what, that's what you're allowing us to do on the other side of the ocean in Lebanon uh, is to is to rebuild lives with these families. Uh, right now, we've got about about two thousand four hundred families that we're serving on a regular basis. Um, we want to grow that number. We'd love we'd love to be serving twenty eight hundred, three thousand mm-hmm. families. Uh, and it's through partnerships like we have with Simple Church that ultimately allow us to do that um, and to really 
see that transformation take place in the lives of these of these families. Mm, that's so exciting, and we can't wait. Justin and I and another. A um, couple of the Allreds are going to be joining James, and actually Jennifer will be along because we haven't mentioned, but James and Jennifer are husband and wife, and um, we will be joining them in Lebanon um, later in April. So I know Justin will have a lot more to share about the work that Heart for Lebanon is doing, and we're excited to see firsthand um what you've shared with us today, James. They're excited about that. And then, Jennifer, I cannot wait for our families this um, Sunday. I think once this podcast comes out, it'll have passed. But on Sunday, our um, families, our FX families, are coming together to pack um, unbirthday party gifts for um, the Lighthouse Family Retreat coming up um, on spring break. I know you've got about three of those going on. And so we've got those boxes and we're ready for our families to show up and to put those together, and then we'll deliver them uh, end of next week down to the beach. So excited! We about are that. so excited about those for listeners to have a little context there. Um, you know, oftentimes when families are going through cancer, they can't celebrate birthdays. They can't celebrate the the fun things that we do as normal families because. Somebody's in the hospital. There might be, um, you know, a parent that's gone there in different states sometimes for treatment. And so many of those just fun family celebrations get pushed to the back burner. So we have a huge party on retreat for these kids and for their siblings. And Simple Church is, like you guys always do, um, taking it to the next level and helping us with our very first retreats of 2021. We've got three the first week in April. And you guys are helping us make that a birthday, an unbirthday party that these kids will never forget. So we're really thankful for for you guys helping us out with that. We are so thankful for Christy A and the Simple Kids team who've put so much thought and effort into it. So I'm excited for our families to put these together, but I'm doubly excited for you guys to experience that and for them to have just a little bit of joy and a little reprieve and a little retreat um, coming up for spring break. So That's awesome. And just to wrap up this, I think with the Lego analogy, it works really well because I build Legos with my daughter. You dump that box out and it's overwhelming, right? Mm-hmm. It's hundreds of pieces. Mm-hmm. How is this going to work? But you as a listener, by that one $10 donation, if you can go above that, we know times are tight, it's whatever, but that money will be multiplied in all these different ways to do something good. But you can't fix everything in the Middle East. You can't fix childhood cancer. But what can you do to take that one step mm-hmm. to be one part of a bigger group as the Simple Church? And so we'd love for you to do that. The form to get a Lego will be in the show notes. You can do that. We'll be talking about it at Easter. We'd love all for you to be a part of that and be able to help out these great organizations of what y'all are doing. And thank you. You guys are there in the trenches doing it. And we are just so happy we can come alongside and support some of that. Well, we're great. We're grateful for you guys and the investment that you're making. Uh, it, 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 it really has a huge impact. Thanks for giving us the opportunity to share. We love you guys, and it's an honor to be, to be on the podcast with you all. Yes. Thanks so much for being here. We love you guys, and we will be praying for the work that God is doing in Lebanon and through Lighthouse, um, and just excited to be a part of uh, what's next. All right, that was a great talk. A lot of L words, Legos. I still have local. two questions though, <laughs> right. that I didn't get answered. <laughs> I'm ready. And the and, and Jennifer and James, if you listen to this, I want to know one thing from both of you. What on earth got you started in Lebanon, and what on earth got you started doing a Lighthouse Retreat? We're going to have to do a follow-up podcast. Yeah, because those are two questions that I really had that I didn't get answered. And they're married, so they yes. both have very different areas of focus. And Yeah, because I'm thinking, man, what makes you go, you know what, those people in Lebanon that are that are that you know need our help as Syrian refugees, let's go over there and do something. That's, uh, that's heavy. I bet there's a story there. We'll have to oh, get the yeah. origin story from mm. Jennifer and James next time. But we want you to check out what they're doing with their organizations, the link for Lighthouse, to get involved, to find out more information, to help do an unbirthday box. All those different things are in the show notes today, so you can go look there. Click on the podcast, check that out. Or if you're on YouTube, you should see it in the description. And then Heart for Lebanon, we are sending a couple people over there in a couple weeks, yes. which is really exciting. So you'll be hearing more about that. You heard it first here on Backstage with the Simple Church. You heard it first. And how 
how you can be involved and do that will be coming, but check out their website and get all the resources there as well. So Scott, always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. You did fantastic. Oh, I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thanks y'all for listening.